Welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith, and today we've been discussing the use of experts in trial and litigation and why we use them and how it helps the judge or jury make up their mind as to uh, what the losses may have been sustained by the, the plaintiff. Um, we've talked to Louis Lipinski, he's a real rehabilitation expert, and he helps the judge and jury decide whether or not a person can do the same type of job that they've done in the past. We've talked to Greg Ellis, he's an economic expert, and he helps the judge and jury decide what are the, the economic consequences, how much money has the person lost in the past and how much they may lose in the future. And now I'm going to talk with Bill Mitchell. He works with me here in the office. Uh, we've done this a lot. We've tried uh, a lot of cases. And uh, let's explain to the folks why we use experts. I think sometimes folks think we just get up there and we tell the judge or jury this is our opinion and, and we think they should believe us. And that's not the case at all, is it? Not at all. Uh, there are certain uh, cases, certain types of cases, that absolutely require expert testimony. And expert witnesses are uh, different from fact witnesses in the sense that they are uh, allowed to give opinions. Uh, they give opinion testimony. Let's, let's kind of define for the folks what a lay witness is or a fact witness is versus an expert. That, that's just a person, let's say, who was sitting at the red light and saw this other car run the red light and two cars crash. He's kind of a, a lay witness or a fact witness, and he can't really say, well, it was so-and-so's fault based on the fact that he had a faulty wheel or something like that. That's beyond his expertise. Exactly. Lay witnesses uh, are often referred to as fact witnesses, as you know, and uh, they are entitled to testify to facts within their particular knowledge. Again, the scenario you use, they observe the, uh, the condition of the traffic light, and they can testify about that. As far as uh, opinion testimony, they're not allowed to give opinions. And only those with special education, training, or experience are allowed to give opinions. And when we say give opinions, what we're talking about is, uh, for example, Mr. Lipinski testifying about the rehabilitation aspect of an individual's uh, injury. Will they be able to do the same type of job that they've done in the past? And Mr. Ellis, because he's a CPA and has all kinds of letters after his name, uh, can tell folks his opinion as to what he believes the amount of money that will be needed today to help folks uh, pay for their medical expenses in the future and pay their basic lost wages that they would lose into the future. He has special expertise there. Exactly. Now those those aren't the only kind of witnesses we use, are they? No. Uh, we use uh, accident reconstruction experts. We use, of course, uh, many different medical experts. Um, and, uh, we have toxicologists. Those are folks who specialize in the ability to render an opinion as to whether or not a certain group of chemicals have caused some kind of physical illness. Uh, a lot of folks think doctors can always testify about that, but that's not really the case. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. The uh, rehabilitation expert, tell me what he does. Well, the rehabilitation... Uh, excuse me, not rehab, but uh, the accident reconstruction expert. The accident reconstruction expert, uh, like all experts, uh, takes the facts that are presented to him, uh, whether through testimony or documents or, or whatever, and uh, he decides how an accident occurred. Uh, it's not always readily clear uh, from the facts how an accident may have happened. And so he uh, uses his particular training, experience, and knowledge to uh, come up with an opinion as to how the accident occurred, what may have caused the accident. In fact, what's interesting with uh, an expert is they can sit in court during a trial and listen to the testimony of all the fact witnesses, whereas there's an order of sequestration that, that lawyers can ask for at the beginning of a trial and ask the judge to order all fact witnesses out of the courtroom. They don't get to sit there for the four or five day jury trial and listen to everybody testify. They got to be out because they don't want to uh, shade or affect their testimony. But an expert can sit there for the whole trial. In fact, uh, experts rely heavily on the testimony of fact witnesses to render their opinion. Exactly. That's one of the things that uh, they rely upon. And in fact, uh, our courts are clear that no expert opinion is any better than the facts substantiated by the record. Uh, so yeah, they have the benefit of being able to sit in the court. Uh, they're not subject to the order of sequestration. They get to sit in the court and hear the fact witnesses testify. Now, of course, they're subject to what's called a Dober uh, motion, which is customarily filed by each of the respective adversarial parties. We generally represent plaintiffs, and so generally if 
the defendant hires an expert to controvert ours and we don't think they're expert, let's say they have an economic expert to attack the credibility or render an opinion rather contrary or different from Mr. Ellis's, uh, if we don't think that gentleman's opinion is substantially based in, in, in study and statistics and, and education, then we can attack his, his credibility, actually his ability to even testify in court. Exactly. Uh, Doe Bear is a 1993 U.S. Supreme Court case and uh, in that case, the, the Supreme Court decided that the judge should, should serve as a, uh, what, what they call a gatekeeper. gatekeeper. That's right. And uh, the idea is uh, he can close the gate on certain experts. And the, the notion the court came up with was not only should the expert's opinion be relevant, but it should also be reliable. And uh, so uh, the court, uh, the judge, looks very carefully at uh, the methodology the expert uses. Uh, the facts which uh, serve as a basis for his or her opinion and uh, makes a decision sometimes ahead of the trial right. to exclude that expert, to not allow that expert to testify. And the reason for that is because the judge wants the jury, and obviously that's going to be used a lot in the jury trials, uh, the judge wants to make sure that the evidence that the jury hears is substantiated by the facts and, and, and the guy's education and as you mentioned the methodology the, the means by which he analyzes the information that that is the expert uh, the means by which he analyzes the information he's gotten that's exactly right and um, they the, the, it's it's uh, a little bit more complicated than we've described it uh, there's a certain amount of peer review uh, discussion uh, in other words do other experts in the same field believe in this methodology uh, it, it can get pretty complicated uh, and, and, it, 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 and it avoids some uh, quack from coming up with some kind of uh, theory uh, and, and coming in and presenting opinion testimony which really isn't substantiated by the general community in that profession. That, that's exactly right and, and there are rogue uh, experts uh, who uh, really um, don't have a good methodology. They're, uh, methodology is not supported by their fellow experts and so those types of uh, experts should be kept away from juries. Now be, an uh, expert, uh, generally the defense will hire an expert and the plaintiff will hire an expert and very rarely will you have two experts rendering the same opinion. Uh, so what's the job of the jury there? Well the jury um, is instructed with respect to all witnesses that they are to weigh the testimony of each witness and uh, not count them uh, and um, they have to make a decision as to which uh, expert is more reliable and that's part of their job. Bill, thank you so much for being on the thank show. Thank you, enjoyed it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this kind of helped you understand the judicial process a little bit more. This is Legal Lines with Locke Meredith. Thanks for being with us.